should you use eye configuration, eye options or eye option snapshot in app settings? To answer that question, we're going to add some configuration values into app settings. So if we go in there, we're going to add a new section for product. Within that, we're going to add a few properties. We're going to set the currency. We'll set that as US dollars. Discount, we're going to set as 19. And reviews, we're going to set as true. First, we'll take a look at how eye configuration works and how to add it to an ASP.NET Core web API. First, we're going to create a new web API controller. We'll select API empty. I'm going to call it configuration controller. We're going to inject the eye configuration instance into it. So we'll create the constructor for it. We'll inject the eye configuration. Then we'll set a private read only field and set the instance to that. So we've created the private read only instance. We just need to add it into the constructor. Then we're going to set up an endpoint to demonstrate how we could get the app settings from configuration and output it as part of the response. So we return a type of I action result. We're going to call the endpoint get product. And we're going to return the app settings values. So to do that, we're going to set the currency first. We call the configuration instance. We call get value from it. Because we're expecting a string, we pass that in as the generic type. And then if we go back into app settings, we can see it's product and currency. So we put the parent in first, so that's product. Separate it with a colon, and then just add currency. We'll do the same for the discount as well. So with the discount, we're expecting a decimal. So we'll change the generic type to that. And once again, it's product and the name for it is discount. And then finally, we'll do the same for reviews, but this time we're expecting a Boolean. So we'll make the change for that for the generic type. Let's run the endpoint. It's outputting the values that we've put in app settings.json. If we change one of the configuration values, let's change discount to 18 and rerun it. It's updated discount to 18. That is one way we can do it. But can we bind the app settings configuration values to an object? We're going to add those values into a class. So in the options folder, we're going to create a new class and we're going to call it product options. So we've got our currency where we're expecting a string. We do the same as well for the discount. So we're expecting a decimal for that. And then for the reviews, We'll put that in as a boolean. We're going to demonstrate this in the configuration controller. We'll set up a new endpoint, be a type of HTTP get, and the root we'll call with Python configuration get. We're expecting an I action result as the return type, and we're going to name the method get product with configuration get. Now to do this, what we do is we call the configuration, we can call the get section product as the key. So this is this section here. And then we call the get, we're expecting the type of product options, that's the class that we just set up. And then we can just return that as the response. If we run the endpoint, it's outputting the properties for us. We can also bind the configuration options to the object. So to do that, we're going to demonstrate that by setting up a new endpoint. We'll call it with hyphen configuration hyphen bind. We'll call the endpoint get product with configuration bind. Now to do this, we create a new instance of the product options. Then we call configuration get section again, passing in the parent configuration value, which is product or the configuration key, and then we just bind it to the product options. And we can return that as part of the response. And that gives us the same result. If you're using dependency injection, you can add the options to the IOC container and inject them into the class that you want to use them.
To add it to the Pency injection, we need to add it in program.cs, so called builder.services.addoptions. The generic type is product options, and then we need to bind it, so called builder.configuration.get section product. So this section in app settings is being binded to the product options type. In configuration controller, we need to store a reference for it. So the type is product options and we're going to name it product options value. To inject it in, we call I options and then when we pass in product options as the generic type and we'll call it product options. To set the instance of it, we call product options dot value. To test it, we're going to set up another endpoint. So we'll call it with hyphen I options. And the method name we'll call get product with I options. And we just return the underscore product options value. When we run it, it's outputting our configuration values. Let's change one of the values and see if it updates it. It hasn't updated it. It's kept the same values. We need to restart the application for it to update it. It's frustrating that we can't change the configuration values in I options unless we restart the application. Is there another way we could do it? We can also use I options snapshot. To demonstrate this, we're going to create a new instance of the product options type, but we're going to call it underscore product options snapshot value. Now to inject it into dependency injection, we replace I options with the I option snapshot type. We just rename the parameter name for it. We'll set that to the instance that we've stored. So it's product option snapshot dot value. And we'll create a new endpoint to demonstrate it. So we're going to call it I get product with I options snapshot. And we return the type that's got our snapshot values in it. So when we run it now, it's outputting our configuration values. We go into app settings.json and change the discount, rerun it, and it's updated it for us. iOptions and iOptions snapshot also supports nested configuration values. Let's add category configuration values into the product configuration. Let's add category into the product section in app settings. We create a new section for category. And within that, we're going to have a configuration value of include image and set it to true. Now we need to set up a new class. We're going to do that. We're going to call it category options. We'll add that configuration value into the class. So it's a Boolean and we're going to name it include image. Now to add it to product options, what we can do is we pass in the type. So it's category options, the name of category. Now we can test it with I options and I option snapshot. So if I options is output in the category, we do the same with I option snapshot. We'll execute that. It's also including it. If you want to know how to validate your app settings, watch this video next. In conclusion, it's best to use iOptions snapshot when using configuration values in ASP.NET Core. Not only can you bind the configuration values to a type, it also updates without restarting the application. You can also use nested configuration values as well.